Hi, seniors. I'm sorry that I couldn't be there today, but you're going to do an awesome job without me. This video is just in case you need a quick reminder about the goals for your novel card. So as you can see, it's on the screen, and I went ahead and I filled in a little bit of information for you. Um, remember, this novel card is for 1984, and it is essentially like your super cheat sheet, especially for essay writing. Any names that you have trouble remembering, any symbols that you're sometimes confused about, this is a place to put them so that if you end up wanting to use them as evidence in your essay, you're able to slam dunk it without any hesitation. So this is all going to be on 1984. 1984 was published in 1948. We know that the, or the author is George Orwell. George Orwell was born in 1903 and he died in 1950. He was an English citizen and he lived in England and Burma during his life. Another thing that's really important is the narrative mode. Um, oh, I forgot to say this. I really recommend that you change your text color to be a, a color like red or blue um, or purple, something dark that's easy to read, but also something that's bright enough that you can tell it apart from the outline. You can see what information that you've added in. So, um, oh, when it comes to setting, I recommend that you talk explicitly about like the country and like the national setup of the setting, that this is a dystopian future. It's set in Oceania, which is a super country, and it's the, the names of the two neighbor, neighbors, Eurasia and East Asia, is the other super countries, um, so that you have those names there to use. But then when you talk about settings like the uh, Room 101 or Golden Country, those should probably go down in your symbols and symbolism box instead. Sorry. Back to narrative mode. The narrative mode for 1984 is third person limited. It's third person limited um, because we see the book told in a like Winston and Winston he went, he saw, he did perspective. Um, so it would be first person if it was like I went, I saw, I did, I felt, and it was all told from an I perspective. This one is told from a third person perspective with he and Winston's name. However, at the same time, it is really important that you remember that this is a limited point of view. Everything we see or even hear in the novel is filtered through Winston's pers perspective. It's also important that you remember that Winston is perhaps, you know, not always a very reliable narrator. And if you want to explain why he's unreliable, this is also a really great place to just put a couple of those notes in about Winston's perspective from like an author or audience point of view. The next section is when you talk about Winston in a more specific and nuanced way. So our protagonist of the novel is, of course, Winston. Make sure that you're clear and explicit. This is your time to use your thesaurus or look up um, like syntax that's like complex and nuanced in order to describe these characters. On your essay, you don't want to be trying to Google the right word because you didn't prepare your novel card well enough. Your novel card is your time. Like prepare all of the high quality synonyms and all those great words that are going to like bump your essay up in sophistication. Put it in here. Make sure you describe Winston as a character, like his traits um, and how you feel about him, your opinion of him, but then also the challenges that he faces. What are some of the things that Winston really struggles with and that he has to face while over the course of the story? Make sure you also catch that before the pivotal change in the after. What is the moment where we see a huge change happen in Winston? Technically, there's room for you to interpret too. Like, for example, when he falls in love with Julia, he has a major shift in character and perspective. And then also when he goes to room to the Ministry of Love and to Room 101, he experiences a big change and shift in perspective. So make sure you talk about those. For the antagonist, the antagonist can be a little bit complicated. So this is where you're going to put in whoever it was that was opposing or working against the main character or the protagonist. For the antagonist, a lot of people say, like, like obviously the ultimate big bad guy of the whole novel, the whole time, is really the government. It's really Big Brother. If you're pulling in Big Brother as a representative, representative of the government in kind of like a personified form. But this whole book is all about government corruption and government abuse of power. It's really hard to write about the government as a character, though. 
So if you're taking a more nuanced view or you want to have a little bit more like specificity in your analysis, you would maybe want to put in Big Brother and possibly also O'Brien. Like O'Brien is the direct antagonist to, Winst to Winston. And a lot of times their relationship with each other is, the, is a s symbolic of the relationship between an individual rebel and a opposing uh, structural government. And the conversations they have while Winston is being tortured are pretty representative of that. Scrolling down, um, there's room for you to put in other characters. So whoever you think is an important supporting character in the novel. This could be Julia, Syme, Parsons, Mr. Charrington. Whatever character you need a little refresher on or if you're going to want to talk about them in your essay, this is your place to put information for them. I want to remind you that this is a flexible document. You can add extra rows and extra space in. So if you want to add another supporting character, all you have to do is right click on the document and then hit insert row above or insert row below and you can add in another row for a character. In the plot chart, I recommend that you separate the plot up into what happens in book one or part one, what happens in book two or part two, and what happens in book three or part three. Um, this will help you keep the different events separate and also look at like multi the multiple changes that Winston might go through and how each one can support a different level of your analysis. For the next one, major themes. In 1984, all of the major themes are going to revolve around government and social commentary. They all are. So what I really recommend here is that you use a lot of the things like what we did in our uh, prompt breakdown and brainstorm for a practice essay in Business English, um, where we made a list of like thematic statements that could apply, or um, when we were doing the final chapter of the book and we were looking at like statements about uh, what the ultimate message of Winston's change was, and you turn those into statements about totalitarian governments, or on the flip side, statements about what citizens need to do to prevent totalitarian governments. And those are going to be like, a, like you can make a list of thematic statements that will be really easy to pull out and modify and plug into your essay for analysis. Abstract supporting ideas is a great place for you to put in things that are a little bit more personal or nuanced. You want to talk about toxic relationships or what it means to be in love or the relationship between parents and children or things that just spoke to you personally in the book. Abstract and supporting ideas is a great place to put that in. Major symbols. We hit symbolism super hard, super, super hard in this book. I, there should be a huge list of symbols here, starting from the top and moving all the way to the bottom of the whole book. I want to be clear here, like this is a place for you to put in detail about these symbols. Make sure that you're not going to forget or fumble it at the last minute. For example, if we're going to talk about the paperweight as one of those symbols, like you can say that it's it's literally a glass paperweight with coral inside bought from an antique shop. You can say that it was shattered when Winston and Julia were arrested. Beyond just the surface level, as a symbol, make sure you analyze the actual symbolism of it as well. The paperweight represents the past under glass. beautiful and undisturbed. It represents a past where things were allowed to be both beautiful and useless, something forbidden in the current dystopia. Um, it also 
represents Winston's over idealization. Slash romantic romanticization of the past. And it represents the fragility of Winston and Julia's relationship. which is also shown, which is also foreshadowed, there we go, by it shattering. So that's an example of a long and complex like analysis of the paperweight, but I recommend that you do them like this. The more you put into the novel card, the less you have to pull out of your brain automatically when you're essay writing. Okay, last one here at the bottom. Meaning of the work as a whole. I recommend that you really look at the statements that you made um, on the final chapter. So that last assignment that we did about where Winston gives in to Big Brother at the very end. And when we look at like what the ultimate message of Winston's transformation is. Why did the author create a character and then deliberately destroy him uh, like in our eyes throughout the course of the story? What is the ultimate social commentary of the whole book? and make that statement something that maybe you don't have to put into your thesis, but you wanna try and push yourself to or push yourself into talking about by the end of your essay. You guys are gonna do an awesome job.